Oh yeah, oh yeah, I am a loud American. This is Grammy Mary, and wow, looks like I'm kind of blasting you a little bit, but that's okay. I'd much rather be a little bit too loud than not loud enough. So, you are listening to Grammy's Rocket Chair here on RealLibertyMedia.com channel 3, also on the RLMRadio.xyz site, and the RLM TuneIn radio station, the RLM internet radio station. And the RLM Spreaker channel. Hey there, hi there, ho there, everybody. It is a wacka, 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 wacka doodle Wednesday. <laughs> and I am your hostess with the mostest, just freaking whacked outness. Is that a word? It is now because I just used it. I'm, and I even used it in a sentence properly and everything. Okay, let me go see here. I got notifications over here on Twitter. Woohoo! Woohoo! Thank you, Barman. Thank you for tweeting me and thank you for liking my tweets and retweeting them and all that other fun stuff. Because, yeah, yeah, I'm getting a little bit loud. That was Randall Zwarte and the group Zwarte, by the way. And they they were pretty much a staple in Sturgis um, for years and years and years and years. And uh, one of the band's key players, I believe he was a bass player, passed away not too long ago. He's, wow, that guy had a hell of a voice. Whee! And Randall had a few issues of his own, so I don't know if they're touring anymore or not. But they, you know, touring in the Midwest and stuff, and that I knew of, at least. I've seen them a couple of times in concert, and holy crap, are they ever loud Americans. But damn, are they good. <laughs> good biker band. wee ha. Okay, let's see. Where am I at? I yeah. Excuse me, a hiccup. Wow, where'd that come from? Um, so over there on Twitter, I don't really see a whole hell of a lot going on other than thank you, Barman, for sharing that I am live right now. No, this is not Memorex. It really is me. I'm gonna go ahead and shut Twitter down because yeah, we got Thunder Boomers going on out here, you know, around the area. So the fewer things I got running, the better. Um, also, over here in this corner pocket to the Crush and Run chat, I see Sock Puppet is over here. Thank you, Cyborg Noodle, for tweet or for sharing that over there in the chat. I truly do appreciate it. I also see Fleets over here as well as Moose Girl. And I saw those gifts. And yeah, the Dirty Knees ones. Wow. That one gal. Holy crap. It looked like uh, she's lucky she didn't get black eyes. <laughs> You guys find the weirdest stuff over there, I tell ya. Okay, over here on this fakey book, Pete is over here. Hey there, Pete. How are you doing? Long time no see. Um, I also see the lovely Mary B is over here. And who else? There was someone else. Mary B and Pete and let me check. Just a second. Weeda! Weeda! She's so awesome. Weeda's the one that said that the earth can't be flat because if it was, cats would have already knocked everything off the edge. Which, that's true. Isn't it, Doozer? Doozer's in my lap right now and she's ignoring me, which is her way of saying, yeah, so what of it? Okay. <laughs> now that I've done, oh shit, and I did not open that effing site. Shame on me. See, I'm just, yeah. I'm I'm here, but I'm not all here, which is really nothing unusual for this whole broad. Okay. Yeah, I'm just, I'm so damn flustered because JJ professed his love for me earlier today. <laughs> JJ's, I know you're just giving me shit, sweetheart, but I love you right back, hon. And I do love your accent. Thank you, Grimmy, for tweeting or for tweeting. See, I got tweet, 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 tweet on the brain. I'm, I'm twittered oh well grammy shared me over here on this rlm or on the yeah that too some bitch can i start over <laughs> talk about freaking wackadoodled i am wackadoodled today and i really haven't i haven't done any kind of fun little chemical stuff either what the hell what the hell must be something in the weather 
must be all kind of weird shits going on with the weather in any case grimmy shared me over on this freedoms network side i also see the lovely mary b is here as well as yours truly um let's see what else is going on td sanders is also over here as well hey there td how you doing sweetie long time no chitty chat um and now to get to where you need to be if you wish to give me static yeah um my early insertion left me what <laughs> I don't know about that, Sock. I might be missing a few brain cells. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, and Rob Works says no mulligans. Damn it. Oh, that's the problem with live radio is, yeah, you guys get to deal with all my faux pas. Oh, well. Oh, no, I only have two paws, and then I have two, two feet. But I have kitties and doggies. They have faux paws. Ha, 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 Okay, over here in the RLM, right up top is Barman, the most splendiferous bot in the whole wide world. Why? Because I said so. Uh, do over, turn over, all good. Oh. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> well... <laughs> Moving along. Um, I also see Cowboy Tech is here. Hey there, Cowboy Tech. I hope you're hearing pleasant voices. I also see Grimner is here, who is the RLM god, don't you know? And he's closely followed by the lovely Moose Girl. Hey, Moosey, how's it going? I also see the lovely Kate is in the house. Hey there, Kate, how you doing? How's the weather down there in the great state of Texas? And looky there, Alias D, or Alias, is here, as well as Asmo. Asmo, you're kind of sort of in the upper middle. Well, all righty. <laughs> That's kind of like goes along with the sock puppets do over turnover thing, I'm thinking. <laughs> or maybe, maybe Asmo saw that second gif over there in uh, the corner pocket. You never know. That's probably why he's loitering in that uh, middle upper middle region oh my goodness i also see the lovely beth is here hey there beth didn't see you much in the chat if at all today actually i don't recall seeing you in the chat today i also see chal sedoni is here as well as double dip and a chloe and looky there dakota is in the house as well as frumpy frumpy is dropping f-bombs hmm what's up with that <laughs> I'm here. I'm not dropping an F-bomb yet. Yet. But that doesn't mean I won't. I also see IB Don C is here as well as Java, 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 Java Doctor 2. And looky there, JJ's is logged in. Hey there, hon. How you doing over there in Scotland? I you, Yeah, just not even going to bother trying with that accent because I suck at it. I truly do. Rob Works is here. Hey there, Rob. And he fired up the bubbler because he is the man. He's the bubbler man. And he was jamming to that Zwarte, don't you know? Uh, trust number one is here. Hey there, sweetie. As well as BTC Bob. Apparently white people don't like her either. Oh, really? Uh, you got news? What's that? Oh, real reason Hillary lost to black people yeah uh no she lost because she apparently didn't perform very well under a desk or maybe she was trying to perform under a desk but you know they just couldn't get past the whole image of her under the desk Ew. wow i'm gonna be traumatized for life i don't know about the rest of y'all i also see colfax 101 is here as well as dimma hi there dimma it's getting a little bit dimma outside because clouds are moving in and looky there jehovah one is is he he's turning up some kabooms out there that's what he's doing he's being busy and uh juana taco is in the house hey there juana taco you know what I did not get my breakfast burrito this morning. Oh, yeah. 
I also see Kozu is here. Hey there, Kozu. How you doing? And looky there. There's also a KD Troxel in the house. Hey there, KD. Um, oh, you just had to share that, didn't you, Sock? Yeah, it's like, wow, she's got butter bing, butter boom, butter, 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 butter. <laughs> Bless her heart. She's got a really big heart. Um, <laughs> I also see lowercase man is here, as well as the lovely Miri B from Down Under. How you doing, lady? And mmm, bot is in the house. And looky there, North Force. You know what? The force is coming out of the south today. South, southwest. Um, you can't get the site to respond? What's wrong? I hate when that happens. Uh, Phantom Link 29 is here. Hi, Phantom. How you doing? Didn't use your little blurb thing today. I don't know why. Uh, well, yeah, I just didn't. Oops. I also see Pawn Sauce. Save my eyes. What am I going to do with them later? <laughs> it's not, I've seen everything around here. So... <laughs> Okay. Hi, Pon Pon Sauce. And looky there, the lovely rain. We're going to have some rain. I'm thinking, you know, speaking of rain, wow. Last night, um, yeah, I it came in and sprinkled a little bit. Thankfully, I had already cleaned up the mower because I saw it moving in. It's like, mm, no, nah. it'll probably just sprinkle. Doesn't look like it's that bad. So I cleaned up the mower, put it away, got inside. Let the puppies in and fed them and uh yeah what bubba wanted to go back outside and nope 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 it's raining but it didn't last long so i thought okay no big deal so let the doggies back outside this morning i get up i have over an inch in my rain gauge holy crap when the hell did that happen apparently while i was sleeping okay back to saying hey because i'm i'm Rain got me sidetracked because cause she's rain, don't you know? And that's what she does. And I'm I'm doing hand signals right now because I have no idea why. But I am. <laughs> I'm going Italian all of a sudden. I also see Sock Puppet who is sharing that little bada bing, bada boom, bada 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 boom, bada boom. Yeah, I don't know if you'd get cross-eyed, but you'd most definitely have Marty Feldman eyes after watching that. Uh, I also see Stats Bob is here as well as Tip Bob and to round out the crew is Ville E underscore. So that's everybody over here in the RLM chat for now, unless someone else pops in. And you know what? I'm I mean I did grab a few links in throughout the days since the last time I was on the Redidio, but I really don't know what I grabbed. <laughs> Oh, man. I, I know I stuck an awful lot of stuff in my pocket because I thought, I want to I wanna read this stuff later. But, yeah. Let's see. What all did I want to go to? Oh, well, you know, I'll just kind of read off some of this shit that I threw in there because, yeah, I'm not real sure. Um, Which, you know, I might want to. I'm, I'm going to go to this one real quick just because, yeah. It's from the 7th of this month, or no, the 5th of this month. Dersh. Wow. <laughs> and it's from fastcompany.com. Six flags that say that your boss is going to be a nightmare. Hmm. Yeah. Well, I've worked for some of those people. The uh, old adage is often true. We don't quit jobs. We quit bosses, which uh, actually, yes. The jobs that I have quit, pretty much I enjoyed the job. I just couldn't stand who I worked for. And I was even, you know, actually uh, willing to take a cut in pay just to get away from. Because, you know, those floaters that float to the top, sometimes you just plain can't get rid of them. So you just remove yourself from the situation. And that's what I did. So... <clears throat> Besides hurting your mental well-being and productivity, working for a bad boss can severely impact your health. Researchers from Harvard Business School and Stanford University found that the stress 
bad bosses can cause can be as damaging as secondhand smoke. Well, it depends on what kind of secondhand smoke you're talking about. You know, if if you're getting a contact high from someone else, that's not necessarily a bad thing, don't you know? (laughs) And those bad bosses may also be making you sad, lazy, and fat. Hey, 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 hey. (laughs) Of course, um... Many of us don't have the financial or logistical freedom to just quit a job without a new one lined up if we get stuck with a bad boss. So, what is one to do? You can, of course, learn to deal with the bad boss as best as you can. However, as with most maladies, the best medicine is prevention. So if you can learn to identify the warning signs of a bad boss during the interview stage, you can avoid that job and its potentially toxic work environment. So here are some of the biggest red flags to look out for, according to a recruiter and management professional that we spoke to. Oh, is this something along the lines of, we're going to just investigate this and and see if we did anything wrong and then later determine that we did nothing wrong and so you're just SOL. I wonder if that's... Let's find out, shall we? So red flag number one, do they lack basic respect and manners? Oh, I know lots of people that are not necessarily bosses. Um... Oh, gr- see, Grimmy, Grimmy knows. Grimmy said the first sign you have a bad boss is you have a boss. Well, that just totally sucks. <laughs> I Everybody always tells me I'm the boss, and I tell them, no, I am the boss E or boss-er. Because sometimes I get a little bit bossy when I'm bosser and people around. Although... All the, I got to throw this out there. My coworkers are just such tards. I love them, but they are just so goofy. And this morning, I'm I'm sitting there minding my own business, doing my paperwork, doing some computer work, data entry, all that fun shit. And all of a sudden, one of my texts goes, no, Mary, I'm just not going to do it. And I looked at it and I said, do what? I don't remember asking you. And he said, I am not going to be your boy toy anymore. (laughs) I about wet myself. I was laughing so hard. (laughs) And another co-worker that was standing there went, I'm going to leave now. (laughs) I work with some real tards. That's just all there is to it. And he, he had to remind me this afternoon as well that he, he just couldn't do it anymore. He, he felt so ashamed of himself. <laughs> I'm going to have to have a little chit chat with his honey about that. Because, wow, what in the hell are those two doing? That Are they doing some role playing shit that I need to be really afraid of? Because it's like, damn, hon. <laughs> oh, well. My crazy co-workers. That's why I don't mind going to work. Because I, I work with some really fun people. In any case, <clears throat> even with my experience of interviewing, I've sometimes slipped up on what looked like a well-planned schedule at the start of the day, blocked out for interviews, and ended up running over and being late for the next interviewee. This is from Sarah Dowzell, who is COO at Natural HR. There is no such thing as Natural HR, Natural Human Services. <laughs> Human resources. Yeah, we're a freaking resource. Calm down. Yeah, unexpected events can happen to the most organized of people. But how they react will tell you a lot about a person. This is often the most easily discernible red flag, says Dowzell. Acknowledging and apologizing for being late to the interviewee is basic manners. And if the hiring manager doesn't do this, what does it tell you about how they treat people? It tells you that, uh, yeah, their time is valuable, but you're the one here begging for a job. So seriously, do they have to? Although you best jump through those hoops. That's what it tells this gal. 
So, apparently that's something with which Rich Hanwell, who is the associate director at Sterling Choice, a recruitment agency for global professionals, agrees. Manners cost nothing, which is true. And if an interviewing manager is checking their phone for emails or is taking phone calls, then they are unlikely to give the appropriate time in your prospective role if they can't even do it when they're meeting you for the first time and should be looking to make a good impression. So no matter how senior a manager is, they should respect the importance of recruitment and turn all technology off in order to make an engaging impression, which, yeah. You know, those these people that are constantly checking their phone, on their phone, you know, texting people, calling people, even when you're in the middle of the conversation with them. Or, you know, those ones that you're sitting there, you know, eating a meal with, and they're constantly looking down at that phone. It's like, wow, dude, I feel real important. How about I just leave now and you go ahead and get the check, okay? Yeah, I'll tip the wait staff on my way out because I'm sure you'll forget that as well. That's just, you know, that's just a really bad sign of the times, I think, or that's an excuse sign of the times. Because, you know, the, it really, it doesn't take much to turn that freaking thing off. And I watched a video the other day, um, even more important than job interviews. Um, they were doing a social experiment. I can't remember the name of the guy that does these. But there was a dad with his young child at a playground. Little guy was playing on the playground equipment. Dad was sitting over on the bench, not watching son, not interacting with son, looking at his freaking phone, not even looking up at his child. Now, this child was three, maybe four years old. This other gentleman comes over. They have someone else there filming this whole thing. And mom is off to the side watching it on a monitor. And... Uh, this gentleman just walks up, offers the little guy candy, tells him, asks him if he wants some more candy. Little guy says yes, and leads the little man off. Now, it's not until they are completely out of sight that dad kind of sort of glances up, and then he's back to looking at his phone. And then he glances up again, and then he kind of looks around, and then gets up and starts looking for his son. You know, rudeness is one thing, but not paying attention to your child. How do you, it's so easy. It is so easy. So, you know, the rudeness thing in the interview process, although that's bad enough in and of itself, but damn it, people, put down your phones. You can be disconnected when you're at the park, especially if you're there with your child. You can be disconnected disconnected when you're there one-on-one -on -one with another individual face-to-face face-to-face time that's what's missing in this world not nearly enough anymore because that freaking little gadget in that pocket that goes bzzz or has way cool ringtones is just way more important than whoever is right there with you in the tangible world so, back to this article. Red flag number two, an inflated ego. Well, I think that's probably part and parcel with most bosses. Not all, but most. Some of them, they have an inflated, e you may call it an inflated ego, but they are just convinced that they're that good. And some of them actually are that good. And then some of them just don't come across that way at all, but they are that good. You know, so it's each individual, each individual. But yeah, overinflated ego, yeah. Worked with a couple of those as well. These are the hiring managers who are more interested in talking about themselves than interviewing you. That's from Mrs. Dowzel. She points out that it's easy to spot a boss with an inflated ego. 
if you ask them any questions about the team you'll uh, potentially be joining, their answers will often focus on them and their personal achievements rather than the wider team. Yeah, people like that, you pretty much know if you do anything, if you do get that position, if you actually do wish that position or need that position and get it, those are the kind of people that you can pretty much be guaranteed that when you do something in overachiever mode and get excellent results, they're going to take credit for it. That's just pretty much a given. The best example of the overinflated ego that she's come across was a candidate being told by the hiring manager that he'd looked at his LinkedIn profile and then asked why this wasn't reciprocated. This person does not only have an inflated ego, but they are also needy. So who wants to work for a needy boss? Yeah, those people that are always going, so did you like what I just gave you? Did you like what I did? Do you like working here? Do you, do you, do you, do you, do you, do you, huh? Yeah, wow, that's a scary combination, actually. Ego with need, that's a borderline narcissistic personality kind of shit, don't you think? Red flag number three, pronouns matter. Ooh, the best bosses are team players who realize the contribution and value of every single person in the group. But... As many of us know, there are plenty of bad bosses who believe that successes are theirs alone. Ooh, I know some of those. And failures are due to their subordinates. You know, those, those underlings, those breathers. But how can you tell which camp your prospective boss falls into when meeting them for the first time? You should pay attention to how they use pronouns in the context of a conversation. If your interviewer uses a term you in communicating negative information such as you will deal with a lot of ambiguity, don't expect the boss to be a mentor. Apparently, if the boss chooses the word I to describe the department's success, that's also a red flag. If the interviewer says we in regards to a particular challenge the team or company faced, it may indicate that he or she deflects responsibility and places blame. Ah, so in other words, any use of a pronoun, basically that sounds like that's a trap that nobody can avoid when you put it like that. Red flag number four, the boss asks inappropriate questions. Yeah, don't be at, if they ask you what your underwear size is, that's really, unless you're going to be an underwear model, that's really none of their freaking business. One of the worst red flags to keep an eye out for is whether the prospective boss asks you any questions that may potentially violate Title VII of the Civil Rights Act of 1964. Uh, welcome back, Sock Puppet. See you later, Cowboy Tech. Um, that is the Age Discrimination in Employment Act or Americans with Disabilities Act. Well, I'm elder than, holy crap, I'm elder than everyone there. <laughs> and there are times when I think I'm really seriously disabled. But I can laugh it off, so it's all good. Uh, all of the legislations listed are designed to prevent discrimination in the workplace and mean that hiring managers should not be asking questions such as, do you have children or plan to have children? Why, why is that a bad question? I don't get that. I was actually asked last week, you know, if I would do some, you know, take on an extra responsibility, basically. And I said, I wouldn't mind, you know, learning another part of the, the uh, programming system and being able to help out, but I will not work weekends. I cannot work weekends. I have entirely too much stuff to do. And he looked at me and I said, I have grandchildren. And he just went, oh, okay, enough said. So 
you know, I don't, I don't really know that do you have children is necessarily a faux pas question, but apparently for some people it is. Apparently, Dowzell also points out that despite legislation, 75% of senior women in tech have been asked about family life, marital status, and children during interviews. Once again, I really don't see the problem with those questions. I really don't. You know, unless those are reasons to keep you from getting the job. But, you know, you, it should, your qualifications should speak for themselves. Once again, I am living in la-la land, fantasy land. You know, that's not the way the real world works sometimes. But, hey, I personally don't have a problem with those questions. Now, arguably, a hiring manager asking such questions hasn't been sufficiently trained. Really? Okay. But if they're displaying unethical behavior at this stage, what does it tell you about how this manager operates? See, now, to me, you got to go on the vibe. It's not necessarily the question they're asking. You got to go with the vibe. Because um, one of the things that I was asked when the new owners took over the place was, you know, about my family, my children, my grandchildren. And I told him on no uncertain terms, I will do my job. I will do it to the best of my ability. I will do what is needed to help out. You know, if I have time and I am able to do so, I will do what's needed to help out. But I have children and I have grandchildren. And if something comes up, my family comes first. And you know what? They did not have a problem with that. As a matter of fact, he told me that he would really found that quite refreshing, that someone would just flat out tell them, hey, I have family and my family takes priority. Because, you know, if I have to, I can find another job. You cannot replace your family. So that's the way I look at it. And I told him, I will do the best job I can do for you, but... Don't expect me to put this job over my family because it ain't going to happen. So, you know, it's not necessarily that that is a bad question. It is the aura, aura or the feel. And yeah, there are an awful lot of people out there that I felt discriminated against. Well, you know what, sweetheart, if you're going to feel discriminated against about certain questions, and maybe you need to look inside. Okay. Honesty is always the best policy. If a, if a question makes you feel uncomfortable, tell them so. Ask them why they're asking it. Let them know that you, that question makes you uncomfortable and explain why. And if you can't explain why it makes you uncomfortable, then obviously you have issues. Okay? I know. Being a loud mouth Grammy. I'm a loud Grammy, damn it. Oh, well. <clears throat> Red flag number five. Signs the boss and company see you as a lackey. Dowzell says that there are still plenty of bosses and companies that see their employees as little more than servants. Yeah, those are the companies that uh, I no longer go to those restaurants because, yeah, they treat their wait staff like shit because they don't pay them the base minimum wage, whatever the minimum wage is for that state. They just expect them to make it in tips. Fuck you. <laughs> There's my F-bomb. That, that mentality just really pisses me off. So I, I do not frequent places that do that shit. To demonstrate this point, she tells me about the experience of one of the first people she hired for her company. Before interviewing at Natural HR, James had interviewed at a nearby larger business that had bigger budgets. James told me that after a great interview with a nearby company, he was introduced to a director who just happened to be passing as he was leaving the building. And all he said to James was, first thing you need to know about working here, James, milk and two sugars. That is kind of rude, unless he said it in a joking way. Once again, I was not there to be able to see the interaction because, yeah, my bosses would say that shit to me and I'd look at them and say, what, do I look like I have a maid uniform on? Because I do talk to my bosses that way. <laughs> and they still put up with me. They actually like me. Go figure. Um, 
That was enough to tell James all he needed to know about what his life would be like working for this company. Once again, I think you really need to be there. Now, there are people out there that, yeah, are asses that, yo, dude, first thing you need to know, milk, two sugars. Get that, we'll get along great. You know, you, there are douches in this world, but... I, thankfully, when I have to deal with them, I call them out on it. Smiles. Red flag number six. The boss lacks enthusiasm. Hanwell says that the red final red flag to keep an eye out for is whether or not you sense enthusiasm and passion from the prospective boss while they are interviewing you. Measure this by paying attention to your feelings and you should feel a sense of excitement when you consider working for them. But if you feel like the boss hates his or her job and doesn't care, leave immediately, which yeah, I go along with that advice. Chances are the office is full of disengaged employees who are plagued by low morale. And you know, low morale isn't always a boss. Sometimes low morale is a fellow employee that is just freaking makes Eeyore look like Richard Simmons. You know, I've worked around people like that, that you just try not to be around them. Because although the job that they do, they do quite well, their personality is about as fun as an empty cardboard box that's, you know, got a stain in the bottom that you're not really sure what put that stain there. You know, you ever worked with people like that? Yeah, I have. <laughs> I've had several jobs in my life and I've worked with quite a few interesting people. And you know, I gotta, I gotta say this for my Bob, he, my boss that I have right now, he's very enthusiastic. Sometimes he's a little too enthusiastic. Like I gotta go, dude, seriously, breathe, okay? Calm down. Just a skosh. It's okay. It's okay. Breathe. <laughs> and then I get called into his office. And then he starts asking me questions. And it's like, okay, I got to put my mom hat on. Because, yeah, I get to do that as well. Because I am I am kind of sort of the mom there. But, yeah, you know, some of this is kind of cool information. And, yeah, there is lots of things. I've... There's probably more stuff out there to watch out for, but eh. Okay, I'll go ahead and share this. Yes, Rob works. They all can suck. Some of them can. Although, you know, I like who I work with. I really do. And, you know, if I got to do something to pay the bills, um, there's worse people. At, trust me, there are a lot worse people to work with than where I'm at right now. So, yeah. Hi, Joe. I see you. Okay. Let me share this over here on Fakie Book real quick. I think a couple of my coworkers will get a kick out of that one, actually. <laughs> oh, man. And a couple of them will go, yeah, we could name. <laughs> yeah, they could. Yeah, they could. Okay. Let's finish this here. I'm putting it over on the FN site as well. So, what's that? I got a notification over here on Fakie Book. Let me check this shit out. Hi, Alex. And Lisa B. Hey, Lisa B. You wild woman, I get to go see Lisa B. tomorrow night, actually. Going to go and have a Reiki session. Because it's been a while. You know, get my chakras lined up or whatever the hell. Get myself balanced. I know this is really scary because, yeah, I'm, I've lived my life imbalanced. <laughs> and I like it. I like it. I don't suffer. Y'all might, but I don't. Okay, let me go see what's going on over here. Oh, JJ's left. Later, JJ's. 
Um, oh my goodness. Wow. Talos, honey. Seriously? Wow. Talos is, Talos is hitting on Sock Puppet over here in the corner pocket. You're looking kind of shag worthy there today, Sock, apparently. To, uh, tell, wow. <laughs> That's kind of scary. Oh, bot's got the hots for you, hon. <laughs> Wee -oo. Um. Wow. Okay. Let's see. Holy crap. Trust number one. That's wow. Okay, I'm going to go back to my pocket. I was reading the chat, by the way. Don't you know? Okay, this one I thought was really cool. This is also from May the 5th. And it's from Sot.net. Um, Icelandic babies who can stand at four months make science headlines. Now that is cool, I think. I mean, just looking at the pic is like, wow, that is kind of cool. Reser uh, results of research conducted by Icelandic professor of neuropsychology. I'm not going to... Uh, Sigmundson, uh, that first name, yeah. Hi, Siggy. Uh, <clears throat> have been published in a respected science magazine called Frontiers of Psychology and have gained much attention. This was reported today by... I'm not even going to try and fee that one. According to his research, children as young as four months old can stand by themselves if they receive the right stimulation and exercise. Siggy and his team conducted their research in cooperation with developmental therapist and PE teacher Snorin Magnuson, who was who's famous uh, for his baby swimming classes, which he taught for almost 30 years. Snorin now practices um, quite calm or Snorin's practices are now quite common in Iceland, where a number of baby swimming classes are available, which I, I did that mommy and me stuff with both of my girls when they were little bitty. And my oldest daughter took to water like, like she was a fish. Absolutely loves swimming, and she still loves swimming. My youngest daughter likes going to the pool and laying out, doesn't mind getting in the water to cool off, but she does not want to put her head underwater. <laughs> she just ne just did not like the mummy and me thing. Not at all. Oh, well. Siggy adds that when he told his colleagues in Norway about the work in Iceland, they didn't believe him. Babies didn't stand unsupported at three or four months old, they said. But after showing them photographs of babies standing on a square made of what is cork, C-O-R-C, at the swimming pool, they finally believed him. According to Siggy, it is a common belief that babies cannot stand until they're around nine months old. But using Snorri's techniques, neural connections are formed earlier than usual, which allows the baby to stand at an earlier age. The results show that forming neural connections at an early age, babies can do things earlier than we previously thought. So the big question is, does this apply to other things too? And that's the question we're seeking answers to. Which, uh, yeah, both of my girls were standing before nine months. Actually, taking off and walking was not until nine months, but... Standing up and just kind of, then they'd walk around furniture and stuff. But yeah, about six months, both of the girls were up and doing their thing. But that is, that is kind of cool. Kind of cool. That's pretty much all there is to that. But yeah, I'll go ahead and share it so you can see the pics. You know, babies can do 
all kind of amazing things. Making sure it's not a pee thing. Uh, what? Um. Trust no two. <laughs> Oh, see, now Sock asked the question. Okay, I'm reading the chat over here. And he asked, is it trust no one or is it trust number one? And Flasher saw it as trust number one. I saw it as trust no one when I first saw it. And I thought, ah, of course, you know, I was, I was trust no one is saying over here, you know, like Mulder's password on the X-Files that kind of thing, which that was kind of where I was going with it. But, oh, you don't trust Rome's anymore? I wouldn't either. He's kind of a creepy guy. <laughs> oh, wow, barman. Overachieving there, hun. Thank you. Um... Let's see. Did I share that over here? Yes, I did. Let me put this over here on that effing site as well real quick, and then I'll go ahead and close that link. Oh, oh wind's coming up. Yay! The weather's moving in. Ding! I heard that. What's going on over here on Fakey Book? Hi, Alex. I see you. Alex Mulder's Fox. And see, that just always throws me. I always want to say it the other way around. Okay, let me put this over here. Oop. Okay. Just a sec. now. Oh, hi, Misty. See you, sweetheart. Okay. Now, back to my pocket I go, because I do have a couple other things in there. And y'all are just chitty-chatting like crazy over here in the... Welcome back, cowboy. Cowboy always shares some of the most awesomest Awesomest links. Uh, let's see. Where do I want to go? Okay. I'm going to go to this one. I think Grimmy shared this earlier today. I think, I think, I think. And it's from my favorite estate in the whole wide world. Don't you know? From UPI, one of my favorite sites in the whole wide world, you know, to go to for entertainment info, don't you know? A Florida man tries to update his registration sticker with a marker for using a Sharpie. He's not too sharp. A Florida Highway Patrol shared a photo of a man's crude attempt to update his vehicle registration sticker manually using a permanent marker. The tweet from the FHP Orlando account shows a license plate tag sticker where someone had used a permanent marker to try and change the expiration date from 2-12 to 2-18. Trooper Steve Montero, who made the traffic stop, said he didn't actually find the driver or file a report for the offense. He said the driver was warned not to continue using the vehicle with expired registration and was allowed to call someone to give him a ride. See? See? That's, that was kind of nice of him. But you know, people, you need to stop here in the great state of Cairns, ass. The sticker color changes every year. So, you know, that kind of shit don't wash here. You just can't do that. But, what? 
Oh, man. Okay, I'm going to share this. And then I see a link off to the side. Yes, I know. Easily distracted, Grammy. Yes, I am. And yes, Vinny, I said easily. Twice now. Oy. There. Get that shared. And I'll put this over in the RLM as well. Oh! Sock Puppet is now known as Trust No One. Well, alrighty. Going to have multiple names, eh? Aren't they? Yeah, Chloe, those are cute little babies. Stand babies are so cute. They're little jubbles and everything. I just, babies are so cute. Okay, what's this? Okay. Back to Oopy, because yeah. So, one of their trending stories off to the side. House for sale listing says don't even ask about mystery tenant. Ah, is there a spook in there? It's kind of a cool looking house. Looks a little bit on the uh, rough side, but it's still kind of cool looking as well. So apparently a South Carolina home listed for sale on Zillow is drawing attention for an unusual warning. Don't bother asking about the occupant living upstairs. Ah, now I'm really curious. The listing for a home near Casey, or is that Case, near Columbia states that the buyer will assume responsibility for the mystery tenant upstairs who does not pay any rent. Oh, okay. Well, that's just cool beans. <laughs> Although I'm, I'm really corn foozed now, but that's okay. All righty. It really doesn't take much. Oh, no. Uh, yeah, I see what you're saying there, Rob. But, you know, when you, when you actually see how, you know, some of those instances where, you know, someone got shot for that kind of shit or got thrown in jail for that kind of shit. So, you know, I'm thinking, okay, the guy was actually, yeah, they took his car. They impounded his car. And, yeah, he's going to have to probably pay the imp. Well, it doesn't really say they impounded his car, did they? They just said that he couldn't go anywhere with it. Which probably means it's going to get towed or whatever. But he didn't get shot out of the deal. Oh, trust no one including. Wow. <laughs> you guys are really. I... Okay. Yeah. See how you are. Messing with me. I'm going to go back to my article. So. <clears throat> Upstairs apartment cannot be shown under any circumstances, apparently. The buyer assumes responsibility for the month-to-month -month tenancy of the upstairs apartment. Occupant has never paid, and no security deposit is being held. But there is a lease in place. Yes, it does not make sense. Please don't bother asking, the listing states. The posting, which asks 130000 for the house, drew attention on Twitter with some speculating on the nature of the mysterious tenant and branding the home a nightmare house. The home was previously sold for 52000 in 1997, and a hotpad.com listing that sought to rent out the downstairs unit before the post expired February the 28th, offers one extra detail about the unknown tenant. Upstairs apartment is occupied by a professional artist. Okay, I'm still thinking it's a spook. As in a ghosty. As in Halloween sounds and you don't have to go out and buy anything. That is kind of cool though. Thank you, Chloe, for switching back. <laughs> and I don't know that I want to know the full one. 
Trust no statist. Ah! Well. Eh. 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 <laughs> Goodness. Okay. We'll put this one over here as well. I wonder who the tenant is. I don't want to go all the way to South Carolina to find out, though. Sorry. Oops. Well, darn it. So, get that shared over here on fake, 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 fake book, and then put it over here on this effing site as well. Let me see, do I have any other. Spooky, spooky, spooky. Where's, huh? <laughs> Okay. What's that, Graham? Oh, Norman Bates lives upstairs. Oh! Oh! Well, Norman. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Yeah. Uh, no, I don't want to go check out the house now. I mean, it kind of, it's kind of creepified looking. It looks like in its day, it could have been a pretty cool looking house, but it looks a little on the creepified side now. Just saying. Okay. Um, do I want to go? Mm, nah. Okay, I think, I think, I think, I think, I'm going to go check out Fark. Because, you know, I haven't been Fark for a while. Fark, 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 Fanny Farkle, and Fern Farkle, and Fred Farkle, and, and Farkle, 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 Farkle. Oh, hey, did you know every inmate in a Colorado prison will have a computer tablet by the end of 2017? We'll figure out how to make prison wine with them shortly. Ah, this is under the FARC interesting category. Wow, you know, I thought when you went to prison, you were supposed to be being punished. And now you get tablets? What the hell? In Pueblo, Colorado, every in inmate in a Colorado prison will have a computer tablet by the end of 2017. That's 18,000 tablets that inmates will be able to keep in their cell. Uh, I don't think it's something that society needs to be afraid of because we don't have all this access that we think we have, said Amanda Hall, an inmate at La Vista Correctional Facility in Pueblo. The 45-year-old is serving time for cashing bad checks, and she points out that the tablets don't come with internet access, so no Netflix or Google. But the tablets allow inmates to make phone calls, send emails, write grievances, communicate with jail staff, order hygiene products, and view their prison bank accounts. Huh. Eventually, inmates will be able to download music and games. What? Prisons also are being outfit outfitted with monitors so inmates can have video visits with family members and friends. Wow. Hall said that's a game changer for her because her three-year-old daughter lives in Montana with Hall's sister. I think it's amazing because my biggest fear is she's going to forget me, said Hall. The Virginia-based vendor... Global Tel Link is spending $800,000 to outfit Colorado's prisons with video monitors and tablets. Alrighty. The company makes its money by charging inmates and their families for phone calls, emails, video chats, music, and game downloads. 
Phone calls are 12 cents per minute. Emails are 25 cents each. 10-minute video calls are $4. 25-minute video calls are $10. All phone calls and emails are monitored by prison staff. So really, it's not much different than the outside world. Not much. A Colorado Department of Corrections spokesman said 99% of state inmates are eligible for release one day, so maintaining family ties is critical. Okay, I get that, but... Mm, You know, if you're going to have a prison system, if you're going to have it as a means of punishment... Don't you think that there should be some kind of lack? You know, like when my girls misbehaved or something, they would get grounded from things like their toys. Because back then they didn't have cell phones. Sure, they had boom boxes and that kind of stuff, but I grounded them from, you know, they got grounded from the Atari or the Nintendo. They got grounded from their, their boom box. They got grounded from the phone. You know, if nothing else, these are supposed to be timeouts. You're supposed to be getting grounded from things, I thought. But, you know, I mean, wow, wow. (sighs) So many different directions you can go with that whole train of thought. Mm. Apparently, um, a Colorado Department of Corrections spokesman said that 99% of state, yada, yada, okay, I already read that. Video visiting assists in creating a foundation of family support and reunification. Excuse me, I yawn. Providing opportunities for successful reentry back into society with a solid support system. The video visiting provides the ability for face-to-face contact for those unable to visit as well as additional visiting time to strengthen family ties. Well, I'm thinking, okay, I really don't have that much of a problem with, you know, the inmates having to pay for their, their call time, per se. But how much extra revenue is the state of Colorado collecting off of their marijuana taxes? I'm, you know, and that's supposed to go to education and all kinds of other fun stuff. And according to the Colorado Constitution, you know, if you generate more tax than, oh, I don't remember the exact verbiage of it, so I probably shouldn't really, but, you know, this is supposed to be going back to the taxpayers. So you're supposed to be getting a refund back. So, you know, or it's, which, you know, you tell, you say you're going to put more back into the school systems, and you know how they do that, put it back into the school systems? They hire more administrative people. As if that's going to help any kind of education. Hiring more administrative people. Lots more chiefs and not enough Indians. Smart move there. Back to this. It's more about reunification and building bonds back with the people with impacted through our crime not necessarily our victims but our families and our children hall said video visitation has saved my state of mind just seeing my baby seeing how big she's getting she actually can see my face and she doesn't forget me which is awesome i do have to admit that is awesome and yeah for cash and bad checks i mean really who did she hurt the bank The tablets are free to inmates, but if they break it, they are responsible for the $200 replacement cost. Okay. Okay. I guess I won't bitch too much about that one. But yeah, I I thought when you're supposed to be getting punished, you, you know, there was supposed to be some kind of punishment involved. You know, like grounding. Yeah, I didn't know about prison bank accounts either. And yeah, thanks, Sock. One prison is serving delivered pizzas. That's bullshit. I don't even get pizza delivery out here. Even in town, they do not deliver pizza except for special fundraisers. And then it's the high school kids that do the pizza delivery. So, yeah, that's a bunch of crap.
and yeah, I've seen articles years back about, you know, people wanting to sue because it's cruel and unusual punishment to serve them a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Really? Seriously? I like PB&Js. But, you know, what the hey? Um, let's see. Yeah, I'd never heard of prison bank accounts either, Grimmy. Uh, let's see. Oh, Kate knows. Let's see. Oh, okay. Thanks, Kate. Kate says it's like when you send them money, then it's not like they're allowed to keep it in their pockets. Ah, yes, because you'll get shanked for that shit. So, okay, I'm going to go back to FARC. Because they have one here that it's under their fake category, and you know me, I just can't. Let's see. Let's see what it is. Because the, the headline is, um, if the headline asks a question, man. So, study suggests homeless are moving to Denver for legal marijuana. Okay, if someone is homeless, how are they? That's somewhat. Hmm. Colorado, you're making the FARC news. What the hey? The homeless population in Denver is growing at a steady pace. Well, I don't think that's because people are moving there. Or not just that. But one of the state's leading experts on homelessness said that the legalization of marijuana is not the main reason for more people uh, um, moving to Colorado. Really? It's not? Huh. Don Burns, the founder uh, and co-chair of the Burns Center on Poverty and Homelessness at the University of Denver School of Social Work, said that the proof can be found by asking Denver's homeless where they come from. The data we have, it's not great data, but it's the only data we have that addresses this, suggests that really, or suggests that really isn't the case. According to an annual survey conducted by the Metro Denver Homeless Initiative, less than 20% of Denver's homeless pop population moved from out of state. From 2014 to 2016, only 18% of homeless people surveyed said that they moved to Denver from outside Colorado. I'm thinking probably a lot of the homelessness going on in Colorado is due to the escalating cost of living, or at least, you know, apartments and housing cost of living other things have gotten cheaper but yeah housing is going through the roof out there from 2014 to 2016 only 18 percent of homeless people surveyed said that they moved to denver from outside colorado if lots of people were coming here for marijuana you'd have a substantial increase in the last three to four years it just hasn't happened but many homeless people said legal weed is indeed the reason they moved here ah apparently marijuana is a big thing yeah thank i came here for the marijuana for sure did and the doritos but Burns argues that just a, it's just a misconception with no hard numbers to back it up. None of the studies, none of the surveys about homelessness have specifically asked about marijuana. Well, well, I really can't imagine moving to Denver you know, just because of free pot, because, yeah, I just can't, nah. I'm not that impressed with Denver, number one. Not really that impressed with the Springs either, but Colorado is gorgeous, especially, you know, get over on the western slope, get away from the big city shit. But, yeah. I can't imagine if you're a homeless individual going all the way to Colorado just to get free pot. I think that's a that's a bullshitty kind of 
Yeah. I wonder who came up with that. Oh, Keegan Harsha is the one that wrote that. That's from yesterday, by the way. Okay, I'm going to go back to Farky and see what's going on over here. Merka! There's a Merka! Apparently, Alabama TV station reminding residents where local fallout shelters are, just in case. Really? Y'all are really trying to ramp this shit up, aren't you? It's like, you should be afraid! Be afraid! Be afraid! There's a bomb out there, and North Korea's name is... Yeah, they're going to get you all the way in freaking Alabama? I don't think so. This is out of Huntsville, Alabama. Oh, see you later, Chloe. Have fun shopping. Be safe, hon. So, if you've ever taken a stroll through downtown Huntsville, Alabama, past the Madison County Courthouse, you may have noticed a relic from the Cold War that is still a functioning beacon today. Um... The sign designates that the location serves as a fallout shelter, a place to seek refuge from radioactive material falling from the sky during a nuclear attack. In Madison County alone, approximately 150 locations are marked as fallout shelters. Designations that were originally established in the 1960s, but continue to serve, albeit as precautionary measure, Five decades later. I wonder if there's been any maintenance done on them. Because, yeah. All of the other facilities that are supposed to be dealing with radioactivity have a tendency to be leaky. If, that, if you need that, don't count on it not leaking. Oh, there I go being all negative. So during the Cold War, the Office of Civil Defense ordered advice or offered advice on what to do during a nuclear attack stick your head between your legs kiss your ass goodbye it's pretty much what to do oh it also included duck and cover <laughs> yeah um that urged everyone who sees a detonated flash to stop what they're doing duck under some sort of cover and face the ground while protecting their heads and faces. Yeah, because they need to be able to identify you later. It's not going to do you a whole hell of a lot of good. You see that flash, sweetie, you ain't got time to... Odds are. Since then, the Office of Civil Defense evolved into what is now known as the Federal Emergency Management Agency, or FEMA, which is so... Oh, good at what it does. <sighs> Not. Most current emergency management agencies formerly were civil defense agencies, said Madison County Emergency Plans Coordinator Jared Cassidy. You know, I think when it was still left up to the locals to take care of this shit, it was actually take care of. But once you get the Fed involved, it's going to go to shit. Local emergency management agencies are also set up on a county-by-county -county basis. And it's these EMA offices that sound off the tornado sirens during severe weather. However, they once carried the charge to protect people from a nuclear bomb. And in Madison County, for example, the emergency managers can set off a siren for a tornado or a nuclear attack. All from the same command console. How cool is that? Odds are better with a Dernator, just saying. So, know of a local fallout shelter near you? Huh? So, to be clear, fallout shelters do not protect from a nuclear blast itself. Ah, see? Rather, they provide protection from the danger raining from the sky and settling on the ground well after the initial blast. So, if you're lucky enough to duck underneath a desk that keeps you from being um, atomized in the initial blast, then you can haul ass to these fallout shelters and it will protect you from all of the shit that falls from the sky afterwards. 
Booyah. Lordy. Fallout, apparently, is radioactive material that has fallen fr out from an explosion. Hence the word fallout. There are three core concepts to protect against radiation. Time, distance, and shielding. Yeah, if you've got the time to make the distance, <laughs> you might find some shielding. Keeping people above the ground and below the roof in the central floors of a building actually provides quite a bit of protection from fallout from radiation. Really? A good fallout shelter mostly comes down to engineering. Thick walls, concrete, and dense materials. So that's why big buildings like the Madison County Courthouse can still serve the function. And it's not necessary to seek a basement or ground floor. Instead, the central area of the building as well as the middle floors can help provide shelter for a great amount of people. That would, that would possibly, theoretically, work in a radiation kind of situation, but you don't want to be hanging out in those places during a dernator. Just saying. Speaking of Madison County, the EMA states that there are approximately 150 fallout shelters located throughout the county. And there's a full resolution map of the Madison County fallout shelter locations, also available on the EMA's website. How effa! The shelters are scattered throughout the county. And after promotion for our story went live, a viewer reached out to us with some of his own Cold War relics from the area. So, apparently a viewer started sending all kind of pictures. Given the modern context in which seeking shelter for a tornado is more commonplace than seeking shelter from a nuclear attack, there are a few things to know regarding fallout shelters in the modern context. For one... Fallout shelters are not stocked with any kind of supplies. So, it's whoever drops, everybody else is eaten. <laughs> Ew. Therefore, do not expect to find a fully stocked survival kit, in contrast to what may be expected at tornado shelters. Ah, and as mentioned previously, many fallout shelters allow people to shelter on multiple floors, which is not advised in the event of a tornado. See, I just said that earlier. So, huh, huh, go figure. Okay, Chloe is left and Chloe is left and Chloe is left and Vinny left and then he came back. Vinny left and he's back. I don't think they're giving away free pot rob works. At least not from those that I've spoken with that go there to get such things. <laughs> I'm not going to name names. So, I have friends. We'll just leave it at that. Okay. Um, let's see. Dun, dun, dun. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Another one from the great state of Florida. Come on. This is from nwfdailynews.com. And the headline is, <laughs> Sir, I'm not going to lie. I sell dope. Wow. Cool. This is from Wednesday, by the way. Um, a man caught emptying the contents of a cigarette box onto the ground during a traffic stop admitted that he was a drug dealer, according to the Gre Crestview Police Department arrest report. Sir, I'm not going to lie. I sell dope. This was Kenneth Navasi Harrison, a 35-year-old Crestview man. And he told this to officers early Wednesday morning. Harrison was driving south on Lincoln Street when he failed to signal a left turn. Uh-huh. 
That's always the story. You failed to use a turn signal. An officer approaching the car saw him dumping items on the ground. As he got closer, the officer saw three suspected Matohana cigarettes on the ground. See if the guy would have just kept his cool. Odds are, well, maybe not. Harrison was ordered to step out of the vehicle, but when he did, he ran away. Uh, eh. Number two, officers pursued him and when they caught him, discovered more than $1,000 in cash in his pockets. Aha! The plot thickens. He was charged with possession of a controlled substance and resisting arrest. And stop with the frickin' autoplay! Damn it! And it's for a Paxton baseball playoff for all things. What the hell? So, number one, always use your turn signals. They're that nifty little device that's attached to the side of, um, oh, Fallout is a cool game series. I have no idea, Grimmy. I, I, I know not of which you speak. Hmm. Because me and games, yeah. Um, be jazzled. <laughs> and uh, I've played Angry Birds in the last three years. Um, I just don't do games. Not that much. Oh, uh, uh, no, there's another one. Gummy Drop. Yeah, I do that on occasion as well. <laughs> I'm kind of a Tetris kind of person myself. So anything that's kind of Tetris related. Okay, um, wow. Okay, back to what, yeah, turn signals, use them. It's a nifty little device that they have, they have on all automobiles, from what I understand. And it indicates if you're planning to turn a certain direction, you know, and if you use those, the popo have one less excuse to pull your sorry ass over and confiscate whatever it is that they're going to confiscate from you. Just saying. Just so you know. So, another one of my lovely floor does. And, honey, are you really selling dope? Or are you just selling them their marijuana cigarettes? Because I don't know. I don't know. I don't call that dope. Dope, dope, dope. Okay. Close that one, close that one. Let's see. I got about a half hour to go yet. Let's see what else do I have. What? Okay, in the Fark Strange category. You know I'm going to have to go. Oh, but right underneath it, I got to read this. In the Dumbass category. Hey, Mr. Gullible. Since you have such a big D asterisk CK. <laughs> I'm thinking that's dick. Um, why don't you meet me at Buckingham Palace for a threesome? What? Okay. Flintstones. Meet the Flintstones. They're a modern storage family. Oh. Wow. Uh, apparently these are, these are some not so safe for work picks. Oh, honey. Wow. Mm, no. Um, I'm going to go ahead and share this <laughs> and let you guys check it out because, wow, you know, some people are just really, really, no. I'll share that link, but I ain't going to. What's the Flintstones? Oh, they've got a lean on the family Flintstone card. Do they really? I'm getting distracted again. Yabba dabba darn, Flintstones block sale of Ontario man's uh, woman's van. What? Huh. A 75-year-old Ontario woman has a prehistoric bone to pick with two of Bedrock's most famous residents. 
Documents show that fictional characters Fred Flintstone and his daughter Pebbles have taken out very real liens against a Perth, Ontario woman's van. Wow! Wow, really? Fred and Pebbles? The gangsters! The woman named Maureen learned of the bizarre situation nine months ago when the liens prevented her from selling her van to a car dealership. The sale cannot go through until the cartoon characters cancel the liens. Or the government steps in. Well, Maureen, you are so screwed. Just saying. The problem has turned into a complicated legal battle for Maureen who has enlisted the help of the Ontario MPP, Randy Hillier. The answer that we got back from everybody was that Maureen had to go to court, had to engage the services of a lawyer to fix up what is so obviously and so clearly a total muck-up. Yeah? This is just Looney Tunes, Hillier added. And actually, Hanna-Barbera is the one, but yeah. Documents obtained by CTV Toronto show that Fred and Pebbles Flintstone listed as debtors, claiming liens against Maureen's vehicle. Um, their address is listed as a 9 Yellow Brick Road, Markham, Ontario. The registering agent is listed as PPSR Test Data 1, which suggests that the lien may have been created as part of a Service Ontario system test. The documents also show other vehicle numbers under liens from the Flintstones, which could trigger more Stone Age issues for other motorists. All right. Thank you, government. You most definitely are here to help when you are testing your systems. Yeah, buddy. Maybe Fred and Barney are working at the Ontario government that day, Hillier said. Uh, or maybe someone's just being a dick. Tracy McCharles, Ontario's Minister of Government and Consumer Services, says she's looking into the problem. I've just learned about it and we're on top of it, she told CTV Toronto. And I want to get to the bottom of it. Oh, so she's like one of those multi-positional kind of people. Alrighty then. First she's on top and then she's on bottom and wow, she's just having way too much fun. That's, that is craziness. That is craziness. Socks to be them. For later, what is that sock? Do I really want to click on it? I'm going to click on it. Am I going to laugh my ass off? <laughs> oh. oh, that is fun. I'll, I will check that out when I get done. How fun is that? Thank you, Sock. Okay, wow. This is just, we're from the government and we're here to fuck you over. Darwin you know here's um, now I got to okay these are six great confusions that are still unresolved okay you ready for this number one at a movie theater which armrest is yours I'll wait because uh, I want to know which armrest is mine number two in the word scent, S-C-E-N-T, is the S silent or the C? Uh, that's another one of those. Hmm. Number three, if people evolved from monkeys, why are monkeys still around? Yeah, see, that's, that's one of those things where I want to go, Darwin. Number four, why is there a D in fridge but not in refrigerator? That's another one of those, hmm. And number five, who knew what time it was when the first clock was made? Now, that is something that Flasher would ask. Uh, 
Oh, that would be. Yes, Sock, that would be an awesome thing to take the grands to. Now, note I said at the top of this, six great confusions still unresolved, and yet they only list five. And Darwin, bless his heart, stepped in with number six. He said that he's still stuck on who put the bop in the bop, shabop, shabop. It must have been Einstein or somebody like that, which I would like to know. Who put the bop in the bop, shabop, shabop, and who let the dogs out? Those are, those are two that I would like to have answers for. <laughs> I don't think anybody's going to answer them for me, but hey. Okay, let me put this. Okay. I got a, what? I got lightning. I got lightning. Woohoo. I don't have anything flashing on my phone, though, telling me there's bad juju yet, but hey, lightning. Although I do now hear the wind. Well. Alrighty. Unless that's just whistling in my ears. Ha. Ah. Okay. Oh, thank you, Sock. The sea is silent. Okay. Thank you ever so much for that. I'll remember that. <laughs> okay. Uh, oh. And my, uh, I just lost some bars on my internet as well. So hopefully I do not lose signal because, yeah, it's starting to get pretty dark outside. Okay, I am going to go and check out um, the pig real quick. So, hopefully. And if, if I do lose signal, y'all, it's just because the weather. So, yeah, because it looks like it's starting to get pretty cloudy out there. So, over here on the pig... Um, the word of the day is special prosecutor, which is once again, Hambo, the difference between a word and a phrase. A word is one, a phrase is two or more. Just saying. Um, a designated witch hunter sum summoned by the party out of power to malign the leadership of the party in power. Oh, Okay. In the quotable quotes section, the government has no source of revenue except the taxes paid by the producers to free itself for a while from the limits set by reality. The government initiates a credit con game on a scale which the private manipulator could not dream of. If bar uh, it borrows money from you today which is to be repaid with money it will borrow from you tomorrow, which is to be repaid with money it will borrow from you the day after tomorrow, and so on. So, this is known as deficit financing. It is made possible by the fact that the government cuts the connection between goods and money, and it issues paper money, which is used to claim check on actually existing goods. But that money is not backed by any goods, and it is not backed by gold. It is backed by nothing. It is a promissory note issued to you in exchange for your goods to be paid by you in the form of taxes out of your future production. So that's from Ayn Rand. Now I'm going to get to this date in history, and then I think I'm going to have to, yeah. I'm going to have to cut this short because the weather is really moving in here. So, this date in history, May the 10th, 2000, or excuse me, 1752, unwilling to come in out of the rain, which is really coming down like a toad floater out here right now, America's most multi-talented founding father, Benjamin Zapp Franklin, road tests his lightning rod. And finally, this date in history, May the 10th, 1879, feeling dangerously playful, Mother Nature scares the pants off some Hawkeye State denizens with meteor strike near Esterville, Iowa. Okay, that is from the pig. Now, I am going to go ahead and, like I said, cut things short because I'm 
my internet is getting kind of glitchy from the looks of things and I really don't want to and the wind's really picking up and so is the rain so thanks everybody for listening in this evening I truly do appreciate it I am going to uh, make sure I got all my critters where we can hunker down and ride this shit out because wowzer wowzer woo it's really getting kind of cranky outside so I will be back on Friday for the Freaker Friday edition of Grammy's Rocket Chair. And uh, until then, stay warm or cool, whatever the case may be. Stay dry if you can. I truly do love you all. <laughs>